The Baltimore Ravens have plenty of firepower on both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. And the Kansas City Chiefs might be a bit worried about that heading into the AFC Championship game. We talk about why and so much more coming up next around Locked On Ravens. You are Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire, coming to you from the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, thanks so much for being here and making Locked On Ravens your first listen each and every single day. Free and available, all podcasting platforms. That's in video form on YouTube. You can hit that like button, subscribe to the channel over there, or in audio form for just uh, audio version. You can subscribe over there, follow along as well, wherever you get your shows. Today's episode of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by FanDuel. Make everyone more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed money plates a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Five days a week here on Locked On Ravens, plus bonus content like today's episode here on Saturday. But with it being such an exciting time for the Ravens AFC Championship game, you got to get out as much content as you can. And here to do a little bonus episode with me. He returns again. Rocco DeSangro, Fox 45, Ryan Ripkin show. And Rocco, we we're talking about it before we hit record here. It's kind of full circle because I had you on after the Ravens beat the Texans. And we were talking about, well, who would we prefer? Is it, is it going to be the Bills? Is it going to be the Chiefs? Now we know it's the Chiefs. We've been preparing for the Chiefs all week. And we have a game tomorrow that just the absolute sheer massiveness of this game is crazy considering this is the first time Baltimore has hosted the AG championship game. Well, the Ravens have hosted the AG championship game in their franchise history. Yeah, man, it's big for this city, for the fans, for the players, for the coaches, for Lamar Jackson. This is his first AFC championship game appearance of his career. So it's, it's one win away from being on the biggest stage in football and two wins away from hoisting that Lombardi trophy. That's every player and every team's goal at the beginning of the season. No matter how good or bad they are entering the season, that is what every player strives to be. This, this is where they want to be, in a position to be one win away from going to the Super Bowl. And obviously the Ravens are taking it one game at a time, but for, for this team to be in this position, for everything that happened last year injury-wise, and for them to rebound, come back, Lamar Jackson gets paid, and the Ravens are now in a great position to get there, get to the big stage and be on that, be on that final stage where teams want to be hoisting that trophy very high in the air. Uh, by the way, Kev, be before we get into our next topic, what time are we recording this episode? By the way, I just, I just want everyone out there <laughs> to know how crazy you are in a good way. And that you're one of the hard, I'm not, you know, I'm not blowing smoke, man, but you are one of the hardest working people content wise in this business. So props to you for, for being awake at crazy times and, and working <laughs> tirelessly just to put content out for Ravens fans out there. Man, I appreciate that. And, and you want to out me so bad, Rocco. All right, fine. I'll, I'll out myself here. If you're listening to this premiering at 6 a.m., which, you know, that's going to come out at 6 a.m., we are recording this just a little past 1 a.m. on Saturday morning. So literally under five hours before this is scheduled to come out. So content never stops. Grind never, never stops. And Rocco, the fact that you're on here with me shows your grind and your dedication to the city of Baltimore here. Ravens and obviously the Orioles starting up here in a little bit, which is exciting for the city also. But the championship gave me right. I mean, this is so huge and we can be realistic. The Super Bowl is probably not coming to Baltimore anytime soon. So this is the culmination of what you work for. And for a city that has been going through, you know, Lamar Jackson's career, it's been great to watch him, but the results from a playoff perspective have not been where they've wanted it to be. They now have a shot to go to this big game and they've done it by one being the best team in the regular season. Their offense is peaking at the right time. Their defense has been amazing all year. And with that Texans game in the divisional round, they showed that, yeah, they can get punched in the mouth. They certainly did at the end of that first half against Houston, but the difference is in 2019, they got punched in the mouth and they kind of laid down and said, all right, well, maybe next year. This team, they got right back up. Lamar Jackson, again, my, one of my favorite all-time moments. He was asked, we talked about it last week, Rocco. Lamar, who did that? Who did the talk in a halftime? He said, me. It was me who did it. He said it was me. <laughs> and very inappropriate stuff he said and could not repeat it back to the people who were covering the game after the fact. And 
I feel like that's just the culmination of the Ravens season. The leadership has been on point, but the firepower has been there too, both offensively and defensively. And let's start with the offense. I mean, Kansas City's defense, Rocco, has been good this season. They've been one of the better defenses this year in the NFL. Their pass defense has been great, but their run defense has been a little bit iffy. They were in the 20s in run defense this season in terms of yards per attempt. Now, we know Baltimore was a top three rushing offense this season in terms of yards per attempt. And even though you lose a guy like J.K. Dobbins, you lose a guy like Keaton Mitchell, the fact that Gus Edwards is still there and playing pretty good football right now, Justice Hills looked electric for most, if not all of the year. And you have fresh legs, essentially, in Dalvin Cook, plus the threat of Lamar Jackson. You have all those guys, Gus Edwards, Dalvin, Justice Hill, and that third of Lamar. That's some firepower on the defensive side of the ball. That's some firepower on the offensive side of the ball for the Ravens that for Kansas City, with the way their run defense looked against Buffalo Rocco in that divisional round, I think the Chiefs might have to be a little worried about this Baltimore run game. No, I, I would agree, Kevin. They absolutely do. And they're they're a little banged up. And they didn't have Derek Naughty for that one. They're not going to have him for this one either. I believe he just got placed on injured reserve. He's dealing with a uh, triceps injury. And then you go to the linebacking core, Willie Gay, he didn't practice on Friday. So he's questionable for the game. And that was kind of a setback for Willie because he was a limited participant, I believe, during the week. And then to get a DNP, do not practice on the final day, that's not a great sign. Now, that doesn't mean that he won't play. I believe he's dealing with a neck injury right now. But those are two guys that have helped the Chiefs you can keep an eye out for um, when you're talking about the Chiefs defense. Now, they still have George Karloftis. They still have Stone Cold Jones, Chris Jones, who is a freak of nature, one of the best defensive tackles, defensive linemen in the game. So they have their guys. They have weapons on that side of the ball. But Baltimore, they should. They should want to pound the ball, beat the Chiefs up on the defensive line, and start with that, and then pick them apart in the secondary as well. Yeah, and that to me – is you look at the Kansas City Chiefs and what they've done on defense, it's kind of like an identity shift almost, where we've kind of known this Chiefs team to be the, the firepower offense with Mahomes and Tyreek Hill when he was there, Travis Kelsey. But it's been the defense has kind of done some heavy lifting for him this season. But then you talk about firepower, and this is the best group of pass-catching weapons Lamar Jackson has ever had during his time as an NFL quarterback. You bring in Zay Flowers, Noah Beckham Jr., you have guys like Isaiah Likely and, and Mark Andrews, who's coming back. We'll get to him. And guys like Rashad Bateman, you sign a guy like Nelson Aguilar even, who has played a big role for them this season, maybe bigger than some people thought. Now, Kansas City's secondary, guys like LeJarius Sneed, Trent McDuffie, Justin Reed, they have players. But it's almost like pick your poison with this Ravens offense because not only the threat of the run game because that exists – but then you get Lamar into these situations where if the Chiefs pass rush can't get there, and you mentioned Chris Jones, they had George Karloftis, and they have some pass rushers. But if Lamar can just sit back there in that pocket, we've seen him just dice up teams with his arm. And so it's, again, something where you have to figure out how you can defend Lamar. And you talk about the word firepower, the culmination of that firepower on the Ravens offense starts and ends with Lamar Jackson based off just how big of a threat he is. So if you're talking about the Chiefs defense, in any defense, honestly, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I mean, it just keeps me up at night how you try to defend that guy. Everyone, everyone, man. That's the question for head coaches, for defensive coordinators. I mean, would it would it Taylor Lewan say there's like a formula to stopping Lamar Jackson or something? Well, well, Taylor, if you have the formula, let's see it, man. I mean, there, there are a bunch of defensive coordinators in the NFL, uh, everyone aside from Mike McDonald, who would love to have that formula and to be able to help them defend this guy or contain this guy. This isn't 2019 we're talking about anymore. It's not. This is a Lamar Jackson and not taking anything away from the 2019 season. I mean, unanimous MVP was fantastic for him. But Lamar Jackson has matured and improved so much in what? 2020, 2021, 2022, 20, I'm, I'm counting because I'm terrible at math, Kevin. So what, four years it's been? Three years? Yeah, four years. Four, Sorry, three. my math's off a little bit. Since he won that unanimous MVP, he's well on his way to a second MVP. He's evolved in the passing game. He's picking apart defenses in the runs, whether they're designed, whether they're scrambles. That's just what Lamar Jackson's doing and is capable of. And everyone wanted to talk about his playoff record. But this was a guy who didn't finish the season the last two seasons because he was injured. Now he's healthy. Now he's put the league on notice once again. This is what we're getting out of Lamar Jackson. For the Chiefs, in the secondary, my question is this. Legereus Sneed is an absolute stud. 
but he was limited all week long in practice. He's off the injury report. He doesn't have an injury designation, but at what percent is that calf injury right now? Marlon Humphrey dealing with much of the same, a calf injury as well. Same, same thing goes for him on the Ravens defensive side of the ball, but Legereus Sneed is their guy. He's going to be following around the Ravens best wide receiver on the field or, or locked up with him. Probably Zay Flowers, maybe other guys as well. Um, basically, you're going to probably see him out there the majority of the time. So my question is, how healthy is he going to be in this one? And if he's not, if he's not close to 90 or 100 percent, Lamar Jackson's going to pick up on that because he's so smart and pick the Chiefs secondary apart when he can. Yeah, I'm not trying to say the Chiefs defense isn't good or that they can't have drives or plays where they shut down the Ravens offense. There are going to be drives and plays where the Chiefs defense shuts down the Ravens offense. But then it becomes how efficient can this Ravens offense be? The thing with Todd Monken is they can be an extremely efficient offense where they can go five plays, 75 yards in three minutes and 30 seconds. We've seen that multiple times this season across multiple games. And so to me, when you talk about Lamar and, you know, that formula that Taylor Lewan had, which, by the way, he said was the 2019 formula, which is just ridiculous. You talk about four years ago there. I, I will, Rocco, I'm going to drop this stat here with you. I haven't dropped it. I honestly forgot I had drop it. it so I'm, I'm glad. If Lamar Jackson wins this game against the Chiefs and advances to the Super Bowl, he will, yep. one, have gone further than Josh Allen has in the playoffs, and two, have the same postseason winning percentage as Josh Allen. Wow. Wow. I mean, wow. <laughs> I really don't say that, Boom. But it's like Lamar's special, man. He is a healthy Lamar Jackson. We just touched on it. It's a scary Lamar Jackson. And in Todd Munkin's offense, they've helped each other out. I think Lamar has helped Todd Munkin evolve as an offensive play caller. Todd Munkin, fantastic offensive coordinator. I mean, he's done a good job. His track record and his history speaks for itself, but He's never had a player like Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's one of one, man. Like what he's able to do on the football field. It's crazy. You shake your head. You see the moments. You're like defensive players. They don't know what to do sometimes. The Jags game, for example, it's like, what, what just happened, man? Like, did, did you really just break out of the tackle, break out of a sack, throw it up in double coverage and, and hit your tight end for like a, a 30 or so yard pickup? I don't even know. But like, that is what this guy's capable of. And on the other side, Todd Munkin has helped Lamar Jackson evolve. He has brought the Lamar Jackson from Louisville back in, in a much similar offense where Lamar Jackson can pick apart defenses, where he can throw the ball, where, where he can focus on, all right, hitting guys downfield, hitting guys across the middle, picking his poison when they're out there. And, and it's really helped Lamar Jackson's game a lot. Like this is an offense that Lamar Jackson needs to really showcase every bit of talent that he has because – this is one of the most talented, if not the most talented guy from, from a talent perspective uh, in the NFL. 100%. And I think with Lamar, just appreciating how he's grown as a player, I mean, even going back to Luan's thing, how he's grown since 2019 is just, it's not appreciated enough by people, I think, outside of, of Baltimore because they see the playoff record and they see the success that he didn't have in the playoffs. And then he goes out there and throws for 150 yards against the Texans but they win by 24 points. And I think people are sometimes just so hung up on, oh, well, he doesn't have that many passing yards. He doesn't have that many passing touchdowns. When the offense just quite literally is not – it's built to absolutely destroy teams, but that doesn't mean the quarterback has to throw for 400 yards. If you score points, you score points. If you pick up yards, you pick yards. It doesn't, doesn't matter how it happens. And Lamar, you just look at him on the field with your eyes. You do the eye test, and he passes it with flying colors. Coming up, though, we're talking a bit about the defensive firepower this Ravens team has and why Kansas City, with the injury report that we have seen for Sunday, could be a little worried about that. Stay tuned. Plenty to talk about on Lockdown Ravens. First, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp, and this next segment is brought to us by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest, big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing this week. And for me, again, I think that for the Ravens and Chiefs game, they should have put that, the NFL should have, in the primetime winner. Now, it's not exactly primetime, it's, you know, about 6 o'clock. But putting the Ravens, who are the best team in the NFL, against the Chiefs, who are the defending champions, 
I would put that in the later slot over the 49ers lines. I, I just, I would do that personally. And I'm, I'm feeling that type of way about it this week, but therapy can be different for everybody. And most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team. And it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help to try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is all wrapped up. We're in the playoffs now, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when they place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. That was super easy to use. There are so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays. You can find best in the sports app. You can make a play in the parlay. Have the best way to find popular parlays and so much more. So for this Ravens and Chiefs game, maybe you want to put together as a Flowers anytime touchdown, Dalvin Cook anytime touchdown, maybe Justice Hill anytime touchdown parlay definitely maybe could win you some big money on fandle if it all hits so this is vandal.com slash locked on make it first but a layup fandle push your partner of the nfl we're back our second segment locked on ravens with rocco de sangro i am kevin ostreicher and rocco let's jump right into the chiefs and you mentioned some injuries on the defensive side of the ball for the chiefs with the jerry Sneed. now he's off the injury report but on the offensive side of the ball joe tooney who is one of the best guards in the NFL, all pro type player. In fact, he is an all pro. He is not going to be suiting up in this one. Suffered a pec injury in that Buffalo division around whim. And that is a big, big loss. And if you want to talk about firepower on defense, I think there are a couple different ways you can go. But let's start this way. Justin Matabike, Michael Pierce, Travis Jones, Jadavian Clowney, Calvin Noy, Dafe Owe. That defensive front that Baltimore has has been on fire this year and while the Chiefs do still have quality offensive linemen Creed Humphrey is a beast at center and Donovan Smith has played pretty good for them at tackle plus again other offensive linemen have played well for them Tooney is a huge loss and when you're going up against a defensive front like Baltimore's you need every available good player and Joe Tooney is not going to be available on Sunday no and it's unfortunate man because he's one of the best at his position in the game all pro left guard first team all pro and the Chiefs are going to miss him, miss him sorely in this game. And it's it's tough because when when you're playing a team like the Chiefs, you want their their best guys out on the field. And Chiefs fans aren't going to make excuses. Ravens fans or the Ravens in general aren't going to feel bad for the Chiefs for missing him in this game. It, it it is what it is. It's football, but not having him out there, it's tough for Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs offense. I believe I saw the stat. I I think the Chiefs are have the second or third fewest sacks allowed in the NFL. Now, if I'm wrong, I know Chiefs fans and NFL fans, they'll get on me for that. They'll be like, no, Rocco, you're an idiot. But but I think I'm right on that. And that guy is a huge reason why. I mean, he's been phenomenal this season, and there's a reason why he's getting all these accolades. Not having one of your best offensive linemen out there, offensive linemen are so valuable. That's why they get paid so much in the NFL. That's not great for Patrick Mahomes. Now, I'm not saying that's the end-all, be-all, oh, the sky's falling. Patrick Mahomes is still out there on the field. Patrick Mahomes is still able to make plays with his legs. Patrick Mahomes, obviously, we've seen it over the years, is able to make plays with his arm. So, But not having him out there, Tooney, it's 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 going to be tough for the Chiefs, and the Ravens are definitely going to take advantage of it. Mike McDonald knows, the Ravens' defense knows, and they're going to be dialing it up and bringing it as far as the defensive line and bringing that pass rush uh, on that side of the ball, especially, I'm sure that's what you're going to see on Sunday. Yeah, I think also when you talk about the Chiefs and their pass catching weapons, the, the matchup I look at is with the Ravens pass defense. And you want to talk about the horses there. Rasheed Rice, awesome baller playmaker, and he's the Chiefs number one wide receiver. But then you have Travis Kelsey, who I mean, by Travis Kelsey standards, Racco has been kind of a down year, but he's still Travis Kelsey, right? You, you have to respect him. And the, he, two it's touchdowns. Two, yeah, yeah, two. Two, two last week, man. Two yeah. of them. So you got to respect those two guys. But other than that, I mean, who else are you trusting for Kansas City? Sky Moore is not playing in this game. He was IR designated to return, but he didn't end up getting back for this one. Kadarius Tony, if I'm not mistaken, looks on track to play in this one, but he's been a disaster. Am I right about that? Yeah, he's been it's been tough to watch with all the drop passes this season. He was a full participant on Wednesday and then he went limited, limited. Now he's questionable. So he kind of was trending in the wrong direction. It was like, all right, you're full here. And then you go limited, limited. That that makes it seem like, all right, downwards trend, but he could still play. I'm sure a lot of these guys that are questionable, you are going to literally have to keep them off the field if 
they're questionable because they're going to play. Like if you have that Q next to your name, if it's all right, I'm questionable. If I'm a football player, many of these guys, like their mentality is I'm playing no matter what. This is the biggest game of the year for us. The Chiefs have been to six straight AFC championship games. They have a chance to go to another Super Bowl with a win. So like you're going to see a lot of these guys that are questionable, most likely suit up on Sunday. I don't know how healthy they're going to be, and that's going to be a question. So that we'll see when the game actually begins, though. But yeah, yeah, for the Chiefs, man, receiving core, like I trust two pass catchers out there, and it really is Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey. And Kelsey, Kelsey and Mahomes, I mean, that connection over the years, it's it's historic, obviously. They have the most touchdowns between a quarterback and a pass catcher in postseason history, passing Brady and Gronk. So they're one of the best one-two punches in NFL history, not just of this era, but in history. What they've been able to do is phenomenal. So keep an eye on Travis Kelsey. I mean, the Chiefs are going to try to get him open on the field in space and uh, try to hurt the Ravens in their secondary and across the field. So, I mean, we'll see what happens, man. But, yeah, two guys I trust for the Chiefs are those two guys, Bryce and Kelsey, and that's really it. That's it. And, and Baltimore secondary – it's quite literally the opposite. You can trust almost double digit guys in that secondary. Now it's a little less than that, but Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, Geno Stone, Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton, Ronald Darby, Arthur Millett. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on where you trust two chiefs pass catchers, but you can trust almost eight or nine people in that Ravens secondary. And you talk about firepower again, it's all three levels linebacker wise. You can put a real Quan Smith, on a Travis Kelsey. You can bring Kyle Hamilton down and put him I on a Travis wait, Kelsey. I cannot wait to see the Hamilton-Kelsey match. Man. <laughs> I cannot wait. From seeing Kyle Hamilton, sorry to cut you off, Kev, but like there. seeing Kyle Hamilton in training camp match up against Mark Andrews, those one-on-ones, they were awesome to see. It was like, get your popcorn ready. You wanted to see that matchup so badly. And those two guys did too, because they're two of the best at their position. So to see that, the iron sharpens iron, Football players say it all the time. That's what you want to see. Kyle Hamilton, you know good and well, he is probably fired up. He, he's a calm guy. He's a calm guy. He's not going to wear his heart on his sleeve all the time, but he's definitely fired up against about this matchup against Travis Kelsey. You you know he has to be. Oh, yeah, and Marcus Williams actually talked about the the iron sharpens iron where he said, you know, shout out to Lamar, shout out to the quarterbacks on the, on the Hey K. Adams show about how that whole unit gets the Ravens defense ready to play. And I mean, look, I believe him. Going up against Lamar in practice must be tough, man. Like, I, I wouldn't want to do it. And it prepares you not only for, you know, the dual threat ability with arm and legs, but for a player like, like Patrick Mahomes, obviously he can do it with his arm and with his legs also. So when you get best on best in practice and you go ones with ones, I don't think there's anybody else I'd want to practice against in terms of getting ready to go and play, not only just the Chiefs, but really any team in the league. No, there's one Lamar Jackson in the league, and there's one Patrick Mahomes in the league. And I'm not comparing these two guys at all, but when it when it comes to preparing, you want to prepare against the best of the best. The Ravens can't prepare against Patrick Mahomes week in and week out. They can prepare against Lamar Jackson week in and week out. And this year, Lamar Jackson is the MVP. He's the best quarterback in the league this season. Patrick Mahomes, he's arguably, he he could go down, honestly, when it's all said and done as one of the best quarterbacks of all time. And same goes for Lamar. But Patrick Mahomes right now, he's got the accolades. He's got two Super Bowl wins. He's got two Super Bowl MVPs. He's got two Super Bowl, I mean, regular season MVPs. These two guys, they're the best of the best at their position right now. They're two polarizing figures not just in the NFL, but in all of sports. So matching up against a guy like that in practice, it really is going to help a defense, Kevin. Like the Ravens defense especially, there's a reason they won the Triple Crown this season because they have to go up against Lamar Jackson in practice. And from week one, when there were questions about the offense, week two even, week three, are the Ravens going to be okay? What's this offense? What's the deal? But now how much they've evolved, I'm telling you what, man, the defense has as well because they're going up against that week in and week out. Yeah, and again, this is – when I talk about how much firepower the Ravens have and why the Chiefs should be worried, look, the Chiefs have firepower too, but the Chiefs, they're the champs. you got to go through the champs. I respect the Chiefs and what they have done, what Patrick Mahomes has done. But if you're talking about who's the best team in the NFL right now, it, it is the Baltimore Ravens. If you're talking yes. about who is playing like the best quarterback, who is the best quarterback right now playing right now in the NFL, it is Lamar Jackson. So yep. you got to go through the champs to be the champs, right? Kansas City is the defending champions, and they're here for a reason. 
And mm-hmm. I think it's a really interesting conversation based off of just where both Mahomes and Lamar are in their respective careers when it comes to AFC Championship games. So coming up, we'll talk about some of the pressure that's associated with this for both quarterbacks. Also, talk about Mark Andrews returning to the Shooter Stage and a lot to get to on Locked on Ravens. First, this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. And if you're looking for daily fantasy sports, look no further than Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most fun. So many have had it running up to 25 times in mind of this football season. All I have to do is select two or more players, pick more or less than projected stats, and place your entry. With the basketball season here, you cannot pick counter projections across football and basketball from the special league. League for days specifically for counter projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron James, Travis Kelsey, a 10 and a half combo or three pointers made. Plus receptions. If you want to play along some of the prize picks favorite players like Rapper Meatman, like Media and Andrew Schultz, you can now find like community plays under the promos tab of the app through the entries of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. Plus, prize picks offers an awesome reboot policy. So your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball, if you have a player rests the game in the first half, and also turn to the second, that player is rebooted. Prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Go to pricepicks.com slash lock on NFL. Use go to lock on NFL for a first boss match up to $100. Again, that's pricepicks.com slash lock on NFL. Use go to lock on NFL for a first boss match. Up to $100. Price makes LA Fantasy Sports made easy. We are back, locked on Ravens. Kevin Ostriker, Rocco DeSangro, still talking with you. The Ravens play the Kansas City Chiefs age championship game Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time at MT Bank Stadium. You can feel it, can't you, Rocco? The city's just buzzing right now. Dude, it's for, for normal people that are asleep. I guess it's technically like when they wake up, it'll be one more sleep for them, two more sleeps for you and I right now. So, Crazy, man. I mean, there's a buzz in the air. The city's feeling it. You could tell. It's just like driving home and just thinking of that drive. I'm just a reporter. I'm not playing, obviously, in the game. But the drive to the bank, it it, it fires me up to be able to go to a game and see a game. For fans, I know they feel the same way. They're going to be tailgaters out early and often. I mean, hours before this thing even begins. This is all people can talk about right now from, from a sports perspective in this city, and rightfully so. It's great for Baltimore. It's great for the Ravens. I mean, what more can you ask for right now as a fan of sports in this city? It's great stuff. And I think if you're talking about a team, what team, what Ravens team would you want to see host the first AFC Championship game in the franchise's history? This this team has been so cool. I mean, it's just been such a cool story. So many nice player stories we've seen, the team coming together. It, it feels like this, it's like the team of destiny almost. You just went, why you always read my mind? Were you, were you going to say that? Were you, were you gonna say I was it? thinking that. I was processing <laughs> that as you were saying it because it really does feel like that, Kevin. The team of destiny for the Ravens, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's been incredible. And you talk about some of that nervous energy. The, the, the city definitely had it for the Houston game. And there's mm-hmm. definitely going to be some of that. I mean, this is such a high oh, pressure yeah. situation, right? <laughs> but you look at Patrick Mahomes, Rocco, who is, this is his sixth straight AFC championship game. He is no stranger to the pressure here that comes with a game like this, but Lamar Jackson, this is the first time for him. You know, he's been in the division around a couple of times now is one, two playoff games, but the AFC, it, with every step you go up the ladder, every rung, you go up the ladder, the pressure increases and increases. And Lamar's so locked in right now. What really is pressure to Lamar right now? But what's kind of like you, you look at Mahomes and Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey, there's there's no pressure with those guys. They've no. been there, they've done that. But do you expect pressure to be, I don't want to say an issue, but do you expect it to be a factor maybe early on for the Ravens? Or is this just again one week at a time, another game for him? Two different situations for two different teams. Like you said, Kevin, six straight appearance in the AFC championship game for the Chiefs. They've won two Super Bowls. Patrick Mahomes has both of those accolades under his belt. It's he could he could never win a Super Bowl, uh, you know, for the rest of his career. And he said he's got two rings, he's got two Super Bowl MVPs. The accolades are there right now. For Lamar Jackson, while I don't think he feels the pressure necessarily, the outside world is going to try their best to put pressure on him because all you can talk about right now is, oh, Lamar Jackson doesn't have a Super Bowl ring. Lamar Jackson doesn't have a Super Bowl MVP. Well, when he wins one, that's the hope for the franchise, for Lamar. What are you going to talk about now? What are you going to doubt with this guy now? Honestly, right now, if you look at Lamar Jackson's resume, he's not missing much, if anything. It's that Super Bowl trophy, and and that's really it. I think this guy's a a surefire Hall of Famer. It's going to happen. I mean, he is one of the best – what he's able to do, man, this isn't Homer talk right now. Like I'm not, I'm not saying this because we're on a Ravens podcast. I'd be saying this anywhere. 
he is just like when you watch him, what he is able to do, man, it's just special. There, there are not many people that can do that in not only in this time, but in NFL history, what he's doing right now and what he's capable of. And it's really, truly awesome to see. I hope that Lamar Jackson doesn't put pressure on him, but any competitor, any athlete, they probably will a little bit. Now, do I think that affects him on Sunday? Absolutely not. I think Lamar Jackson is as locked in as is as locked in can be. Like he's been talking about it for the last like seven or so weeks, probably more than that, how locked in he is. That's a team's mentality, locked in. So that's what they're talking about. And when you, when you got a guy like Roquan Smith saying, asked about pressure before the Texans game, going pressure, I don't feel pressure at all, but some people do say pressure burst pipes and makes diamonds. I know a lot of guys like diamonds, so I would say we're in the diamond making business. When you got a guy like that, do you really feel pressure at all? Like both sides of the ball, man. I don't think the defense feels pressure against Patrick Mahomes. I don't think the offense feels pressure against the Chiefs defense. Now, that's not to say there isn't a respect factor. The Ravens defense respects the hell out of Patrick Mahomes. The Ravens offense respects the hell out of the Chiefs defense. That's what I'm saying. But pressure, I, I don't think these guys are feeling that pressure. I think they, they are truly like John Harbaugh, who has been there before, been there, done that. It, it will not let his guys feel that way about this game. They, they are literally taking it one game at a time, one day at a time. And I, I really like as crazy as it sounds, I truly believe that's what they're doing right now. Yeah, it is a season within a season within a season within a yeah. season. You know, once you get to the playoffs, your regular season's over. Then the season, in this case for the Ravens having the buy in the wild card, the season was a division around. Then a new season yeah. is a, the AFC championship. Absolutely, game. man. You can't allow yourself to look ahead this far into the season when you're at this stage. They're not. They're literally focused on one thing and one thing only. And right now, that's not the Lombardi Trophy. It is the Kansas City Chiefs, and then they can focus on bringing that Lombardi Trophy back to Baltimore. That's what they're getting at. Yeah, hopefully Lamar can host the Lamar Hunt Trophy. That, that's that's the goal for the Ravens right now. So Lamar hosting the Lamar Trophy will be yeah, in. That would against, be cool. against the Chiefs, too. He beat the Chiefs for it, which uh, would be kind of crazy with that story. I, then I'm, yeah, I don't even know like if Lamar would touch the trophy. I don't know, because guys are superstitious. I don't know like football as much as, as, much as NHL, but like – I could see guys like not touching that trophy, not wanting it, like obviously being happy they got it there, respecting Lamar Hunt and like just the trophy in general, but not wanting to touch that trophy because they're, they're focused on one trophy right now, man. That's the only trophy they want to be holding up is, is the one at the end of the year. Hey, did you see the Jimmy Butler clip from last year when they won the Eastern Conference Finals and Bam Metabio held the trophy and was going to pass it to Jimmy? And Jimmy said, no, I'll hold the next one. <laughs> so may, maybe that's – now, obviously, the Denver Nuggets then beat the Heat, so there was no yeah, – yeah. my, my Denver Nuggets, by yes, the way. Your, your Denver Nuggets, exactly. Yes, yeah. And that is a well-known factor on my – if it's yeah. your first time, maybe you don't know. If you're tuning in for the first time, which, by the way, thank you if you are. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, <laughs> by the way. Shameless plug. But, Rocco, you mentioned the diamond-making business. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the Ravens are – the team to beat here in Kansas city, even though they are the champions and I have a very high level of respect for what they have mm -hmm. done. This is the, a Ravens team right now that you look up and down. And if I asked you Rocco, what's a flaw for them? My answer to my question would be, well, their flaw would be if they make mistakes, if they beat themselves. Yeah. But to me, I, they're playing so good right now. I just don't know. Not that they don't have any flaws, but the flaws that they do have are so minuscule in the moment to me that I don't really see a way maybe the offense sputters, but I don't really know where you beat them. I mean, I'm not saying they're unbeatable. They can be beaten. This is the playoffs. Yeah. Anything can happen. And I'm not saying Kansas City has no shot because they definitely do. They can win this game. But Baltimore, to me, is such a well-oiled machine right now. It's honestly kind of scary. They are. And I don't want to tick Chiefs fans off by saying this. I respect the hell out of the fan base, respect the hell out of the Chiefs as a football team. I have cousins that live in Kansas, Topeka. I believe my one cousin was was a drum major in the Chiefs. Well, Kansas band. City's in I, Missouri. Yeah, what's that? No, no, Kansas no. I'm saying they live in Topeka, but they're they're Oh, fans. okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, <laughs> listen, man, I'm I'm geography. I don't even know. Like I'm terrible at geography, but not that terrible. Like I'm saying. <laughs> Family in Topeka, but they're Kansas City Chiefs fans. And my cousin was in the Chiefs. Uh, I think it was the marching band or the band. So, like, you know, it's it's cool to see. It's hard not to say, like, okay, like, I respect the Chiefs as a fan base, as a team, because I, I've seen so much of it. And, like, you know, as a 
casual football fan too out there, like this, this has been the team to beat like the last however many seasons they've, they've been so successful. But what I'm going to say is not that I don't think the chiefs have a chance. I, I do think they have a chance in this game it, as much as the Ravens do, but the only team I see beating the Ravens is the Ravens. If the Ravens play mistake free football, this is a game that they will win. If the Ravens go out and dominate like they know how, like I don't, I don't know if they're going to quote unquote dominate in the scoreboard and beat the chiefs by double digits, but I, I don't see any flaws in this team, Kevin. It's crazy. It's crazy to say, like, looking at the Ravens up and down, looking at the talent they have on the roster, all starts with Lamar Jackson on the offensive side of the ball. Then you have multiple all pros on the defensive side of the ball and Roquan Smith, Kyle Hamilton. You have Patrick Queen going to the pro ball. You have Justin out BK, who's been an absolute beast this season. I mean, where, where are the flaws, man? I, I don't, I don't really see them either. So if the Ravens go out, play their brand of football, remembering that that this is their home they're at the bank the chiefs have to come to them this this is not arrowhead that they're playing in they're not they're not traveling to play in one of the toughest environments the chiefs are coming here to play in an environment that patrick mahomes said all right this is one of the two loudest stadiums i've ever played in in my career and that's high praise for baltimore it is it is and it, it honestly Rocco, feels wrong to say an nfl team doesn't have flaws because it's like oh well they ha they have to somewhere right i mean there's one area where but they just they're just playing so well right now. I literally cannot identify one. It would have been, oh, well, the run defense was 25th in the regular season. Then they just shut Houston down in the division around. It's like everything you could say about them all of a sudden. Again, it's not saying Kansas City doesn't have a shot to win, but they're, they're, they're just unbelievable the way the Ravens are playing. But let's talk a bit about Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely. Because, Rocco, I feel like it's been a huge conversation point. Mark Andrews officially activated off of injured reserve. He's going to be back for this Asian Championship game practiced in full the last two times of last week or last two practices of last week and then practice in full for this entire week. So he's good to go. But how do you expect the Ravens to try to pair these guys up, whether it's on the field together? Do you think Andrews is on a pitch count? Isaiah Lake has been playing so well where it's hard to justify taking him off the field, but Mark Andrews is that guy. And I think people have almost forgotten how good of a tight end he is because of how good likely he's been. He's, I mean, Mark Andrews is unbelievable. He's one of the best tight ends in all of football. It's, it's, you know, the Travis Kelsey's, the George Kittles, the Mark Andrews, like th those have been the guys that have been so successful over the years. Mark Andrews, obviously one of the best at his positions and obviously Lamar's favorite target. Lamar was asked about it and he's like, I got, I got my security blanket back. Got my, that's, that's who Mark Andrews is to Lamar Jackson. He's his guy. I mean, they've been through so many trials and tribulations together, and, and it's been great to see them grow over the years. And now you pair him with Isaiah Likely. I'll tell you this, Kevin, not too many teams in the league where your star tight end goes down. Do you have another future star in the making step up in just it's such a seamless transition? And, you know, many probably thought there was going to be a significant drop off with People that haven't watched the Ravens, maybe when Mark Andrews goes down, they're like, all right, they have a gap at the tight end position. What's going to happen now? But the people that have watched Isaiah likely since he's been drafted, followed him in training camp, seeing him last year when Mark Andrews was injured as well. And how talented this dude is. He's a, he's like a bigger wide receiver, honestly, like he plays. It's like a hybrid tight end position almost because he's so quick. He's so good. And he's so athletic. I mean, what he's able to do at the tight end position is incredible in year two. And I think that, Kevin, we may see Mark Andrews on a pitch count, but I'm really not sure. Mark Andrews is probably not going to want to be on a pitch count because of the competitive nature. Mark Andrews is one of the best competitors in football. Like that guy, he's he's always like, you know, uses the term dog. Like he is a dog. He's a dog. So it's going to be hard to keep him on the sideline and off the field. But that's not to say that Mark Andrews – won't be on a pitch count. Like we, we truly don't know. And we're not going to know until that snap count comes out or until we watch the game and see Mark Andrews out there. I think he's going to play a significant role. I think Isaiah likely is going to play a significant role as well, because with those two out there with likely playing the way he's been playing, really hitting his stride this season, he's been phenomenal with Andrews out. I think during the regular season or, you know, combined in the postseason, he had six touchdowns uh, in like the last like six games or something like that. So 
he stepped up great. We could see some two tight end sets out there, and that could present problems for the Chiefs trying to match up against both of these guys, and that's exactly what Mark Andrews talked about today. Yeah, the Ravens didn't use a ton of two tight end sets this season, but when they did, it was an extremely efficient pairing between Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely. So I wouldn't want to have it, you know, kind of mess up with the game flow and everything and with the flow of the offense. But yeah. with how good Andrews is and how good Likely has been, that's just not too much of a concern to me because you do have two, if you want to call Likely a star, I don't think you'd necessarily be wrong in doing so. And Andrews obviously is one. So I'm excited for this game, Rocco. I appreciate you hopping on with me. Thanks so All much right. for taking the time as he outed me earlier in the show, very late, or I guess early <laughs> in the AM here on Saturday. It's two, Kev. Um, it's two I'm on a, on almost a two. Yeah. We've been talking for a while, and I want to get your prediction for this game before you get out of here. So do you think the Ravens, are they advancing on the Super Bowl? Or do you think Kansas City, who are the defending champs, come in and make it to yet another Super Bowl? I'm going to knock on my desk right now. It's made of wood. But uh, I, I do think I do think the Ravens will be heading there. I don't want to jinx anything, man. But I think this team is too good, too dominant on both sides of the ball, and they're they're a team on a mission. The Chiefs have been there, done that, and they're they're gonna put up an unbelievable fight in this game. But Lamar Jackson is so locked in. Roquan Smith is so locked locked in. This, this team as a whole, they're so locked in. They're on a mission, coming to the bank. They want to do it in front of the home crowd. I mean, you got Ray Lewis and Ed Reed as the legends of the game. You got Michael Phelps delivering the game ball. You got Terrell Suggs and other guys being recognized. You got Jonathan Ogden as the honorary captain. And then and then T-Pain. T-Pain's performing at halftime. Shaq's performing. It's, it's going to be an incredible atmosphere. And I know there's still a football game to be played, but this team is going to be so fired up, or as we say on the Ryan Ripken show, fired in. Going to be locked in, fired up, ready to go. I, I think I think it's the Ravens moving on. Uh, to the Super Bowl in Vegas. I really yeah. do. I'm, I'm with you. And by the way, I, I made that. I made fired in. That was me who did that. Because Zach yeah, kept yeah. saying locked in, fired up. Says, go, go combine them, Zach. Fired in is what the Ravens are right now, 100%. I, I have it 28-23 Ravens. I think it'll be a close game. But I think Baltimore is playing too. too well right now. And, and 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 that's where I am with that. So quickly, Rocco, tell people where they can find you, what you're working on, and, and everything you got going on here ahead of this crazy game. All right. If you watch local TV, you can watch me on Fox 45 Sports Unlimited. Um, we're we're going to be covering the Ravens throughout this playoff run. Hopefully it goes all the way. Hopefully we're you know taking a trip to Vegas as well. So that would be awesome. Fox 45, I'm on there. If you're here in Baltimore, you can catch me on the Ryan Ripken show with my guy, Kevin. Um, we're doing that. I don't even know what days we're doing that oh, anymore, no. man. It's like Mondays, Thursdays, Tuesdays. What It's like every day of the week now. So yeah, catch us on there on YouTube and uh, you can find me on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, at Rocco DeSangro. Um, yeah, and and love the chat. Love to uh, stay involved in the community and, and talk with people. It's always fun hearing the fan perspective. And, you know, obviously hopping on shows like this with, with you, Kevin, because you're one of the best in the business of what you do, man. And I appreciate it. And right back at you, Rocco. The link will be, all well, the links to Rocco's work will be in the description below here. And you can catch us here on Locked on Ravens five days a week, plus bonus content. Be sure to subscribe, follow along in audio form, video form, the, the whole nine yards. Really appreciate all the support here on the shows. We gear up for a very big game, the biggest game, honestly, maybe in Ravens history in Baltimore. That's all I have for you here today on Locked on Ravens. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be right back here tomorrow with a pregame stream on Sunday morning. I'll probably record that one late at night too, by the way. So be sure to stay tuned. I'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens.